And we're back! Mr. Bones, we're back! Oh, yippee! Hopefully, for the very last time, on Earth at least. Uh, I've heard that one before. Yeah, I know, Mr. Bones, but this one's different. This one, I believe, will be my last words. Well, except for uh, John at Watchmen for that great day is going to be doing a live event on 726, which is Wednesday. Uh, what is it? 2 to 4 Eastern? We'll post it right here. So wouldn't it be great if we're all on that and disappear live, right? That would be so great. So anyways, this is going to be hopefully some famous last words because uh, I want to testify. <clears throat> I want to testify that God is so good, that he is so loving, so kind, so thoughtful, and he's faithful to his word. He said we, his watchman, his bride, would see that day approaching. He said he would surely do nothing without telling us. He said words would be concealed, but they would be revealed at the end. And lo and behold, we found a hidden feast that we didn't understand before. The true feast of Pentecost, which is the feast of new wine, which is the blood of the new covenant given to the Christian church, his bride, but not to Israel. So, last reiteration. Jesus ascended, Ascension Day, on Shavuot, fulfilling Shavuot, being the first fruits of the wheat. The Feast of New Wine is 50 days after Shavuot, or a better way to say, seven complete Sabbaths and the morrow after, which brings us to the 8th of Av, and the evening would be the 9th of Av. Tying those together, the 8th of Av was the day they should have gotten the wine cup of the marriage covenant when Moses brought down the ketubah, which is the Ten Commandments or the marriage covenant. You agree to do this. I agree to do this. We're going to be hitched. The golden calf caused that to be called off and the marriage covenant was smashed. They should have been married on the 8th of Av. But that evening, 3,000 died on the 9th of Av. The following year, they should have gone into the promised land on the 8th of Av. That was the day the Lord had planned for them to be celebrating their one year anniversary of marriage and enter into the promised land. But you know, the evil report caused that to be called off. So that evening, the curse of death. And they would have to dig their graves every 9th of Av from then on until that curse was over. So, we're looking at that day and now understand that's the true Pentecost when the Spirit was poured out like new wine. So, God is faithful. He said, I'm going to conceal some stuff and there's going to be new revealed at the end. This is new information. He said, I promise to send you my Holy Spirit to show you all things, the deep secret things of God. We saw deep secret things that were not previously understood. So, we have come to the conclusion at this channel, me and Mr. Bones, <laughs> and there's many online that uh, have this agreement also, that first of all, I believe I was called specifically to teach of our beloved's ways and uh, specifically his appointed times. I've always believed the rapture would happen, as he said, at the appointed time because the Lord Jesus did every single thing at appointed times, including he arranged his conception. The Holy Spirit would deliver the seed into the virgin vessel at Hanukkah. The temple was dedicated at Hanukkah. And John was six months in the womb of Elizabeth. And right after conception, she goes and shaloms Elizabeth and John Grace jumps in the womb. So we have been through looking at every appointed time, trumpets, atonement, Sukkot, unleavened bread, Passover, uh, uh, resurrection day. Then we understood the true feast of new wine that was not clear, was concealed, but it is revealed in there. And we understood 
that the Lord God, the most important job was to save mankind. How would he do it? Adam lost the spirit, the dove of God, and they were naked. Jesus came to restore the spirit of God, the dove, to mankind. So when he arose out of the Jordan on the 8th of Av, the dove was reunited with the man, the blessed God who came down. He was appointed mortal sorrow. He took off his supernatural, came down to walk perfectly 30 years to fulfill the amount of time necessary to earn back the Holy Spirit, sinless. Then he was restored with the Holy Spirit. Four years later, he would pour that Spirit out on mankind. After he had earned and paid the price and paid with his own perfect blood, that was God's perfect blood in a man with the Holy Spirit restored into that blood, and that's the blood that was spilt. And then he arose victoriously, came back and walked with them seven perfect Sabbaths, arose on Shabbat to fulfill Shabbat. Fifty days later, he told them, go to Jerusalem and wait for the gift. The gift spoken of in Joel, I will pour out of my spirit and you will have my Holy Spirit. So exactly on the day of Pentecost, which is 50 prophetic days, but it's a few more days. That's from Count and Complete Sabbaths. Okay, but that's when the wine was poured off. So the Lord God fulfilled every single thing at appointed times. He came for a job. It's not good for man to be alone. He came to get a bride and the Holy Spirit would bring that bride. So now we see the Holy Spirit restored to man through Jesus Christ on the 8th of Av, leading to the 9th of Av tragedy for Israel. Four years later, he pours it onto mankind to birth the church. And now we see this day approaching that is July 26, 7 and 8 is, is our window because of two days on earth, the start of the 8th of Av and the start of the 9th of Av. So, being called to teach these things, I felt like I was always searching for the rapture time. And any of you that have been with my channel, you know we found a great explanation and scriptural backing for the typology of rapture in every one of God's appointed times. But we are always searching for one specific one. And that is what we found with the 8th of Av, Feast of New Wine. Because suddenly, it was specifically about the Dove Holy Spirit. Grace opening the door, being pulled in for seven for rest the pillar being pushed out, the wine cup of marriage, they got the wine cup of wrath. They rose from their graves every ninth of Av. Well, as the ninth turned into the next day, multitudes would raise from their graves as God gave us perfect typology. They brought forth wind, the Ruach. When the rapture happens, the event is facilitated by the Holy Spirit bringing the bride to Christ. Christ comes to the clouds. Our Lord God himself, Jesus and God the Father as one, will come to the clouds because their presence would destroy the earth. So they have to be covered. The Holy Spirit is just like Abraham's uh, assistant, Eleazar. Eleazar, like Lazarus, is the name of the Holy Spirit. And Eleazar was sent to get a bride for the son Isaac, representing Jesus. So Eleazar brought the bride. The Holy Spirit will leave this earth and bring the bride to Jesus. Same story, over and over and over. The body of Christ came out of the waters. Jesus came out of the waters, restored the Holy Spirit. The Ruach HaKodesh was delivered back to earth. Caleb, the Gentile in the Exodus story, was the only one besides Yahshua, representing Jesus, that gave a good report, and he would enter his promised land 45 years later on the self-same day. 
Ruth, the Gentile bride, got married on that selfsame day of the Feast of Wine. God said, because of the great provocation of the golden calf and the evil report on the exact same day, he said, you're cursed and I will rise up in a moment to smote you and I will choose a foolish nation to provoke you to jealousy because you provoke me to anger on that selfsame day. Song of Songs, she's brought to the house, the banqueting house of wine. Song of Songs, one of the greatest rapture typology psalms. Isaiah 26, come my people, enter thou into thy chamber, shut thy door about thee. Because the Lord comes out of his place to punish the inhabitants of the earth. And he says, in that day, sing to me a vineyard of red, red wine. That we are the temple of the Holy Spirit and the third temple on earth right now. That third temple should be, in a way, destroyed, taken away on the selfsame day that you all know. When Moses came down, saw the golden calf, he smashed the marriage covenant, spilled the wine, they got to drink the wine cup of wrath on the 9th of Av. This is the same day that they got to drink the, the wrath of God. Then Moses said, who's on the Lord's side? Remember how Adam was pierced to bring forth his bride. Jesus Christ was pierced to bring forth his bride. And Moses said, who's on the Lord's side? Come to me. That's what the Lord will say. He said that on the 9th of Av. 3,000 were brought to supernatural, everlasting life on the day of Pentecost fully come, the Feast of New Wine, and the child was caught up as Satan was cast down. Just like this story, the very first prophecy is Noah. In the midst of the flood, God gives us the exact day, the 8th and 9th of Av, and a dove was released, but the dove comes back and is pulled into the ark by the sole of her foot and held for seven. The raven was released the same day. The raven went to and fro and never came back. The dove was released at the end of seven, which is exactly what we should see. The rapture is the dove being taken into the ark, Jesus Christ, for seven. At the end, be released again to bring back an olive leaf, representing Israel is now ready. They say, Baruch haba Hashem Adonai. Blessed is he who comes in the name, the anointed one, Jesus Christ, the one whom they had pierced. So, this is one new thing. Adam and Eve, when they ate of the fruit of knowledge of good and evil, the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, when, when the Lord created the world, he created his creation to follow its own pattern. He, he set the, the sun, moon, and stars in place, and the planets would revolve around, and everything he knew, the time, they would show what he was going to do. But it was set in place from the beginning. So he knew when the tree of the knowledge of good and evil would bear fruit. And he said, because this is much later, this is 1600 years later, when he does this prophecy, but he knew the day that the original sin would happen. And this is a new understanding, cannot be completely proven biblically, but typologically and logically, I believe it is proven. If you are eating of a fruit and you suddenly become naked, Mr. Bones, yikes! What would you do? Cover immediately. Exactly. So if you're eating from a fig tree, are you going to run and find some banana leaves or a you know, coconut tree or whatever? You're going to right there grab those leaves and cover you up. So I say the tree of the knowledge of good and evil was the fig tree and they covered with fig leaves and that would birth Israel being the fig tree generation and they would try to cover with fig leaves, which has the same gematria of the Torah or the law. So, what blooms at the exact same time as fig trees? The vine. The vine of grapes. 
Of all of the fruits, Mr. Bones, what fruit has been associated with life, as in the tree of life that they didn't eat of? Uh, life, let's see. Um, well, uh, God says that the life is in the blood and blood must be spilled. And Jesus said, drink this, this is my blood, the blood of the new covenant, which brings everlasting life. I would have to say grapes. Mr. Bones, I couldn't have said it any better myself. So, there was the time, I believe God said, the spirit and the spirit of Satan, being the raven, would move at the same time. Original sin, Satan was already running to and fro, and he says, hey, this fruit's in bloom right now. I always thought it was perpetually in bloom, and maybe it was. But I just thought, as I was dwelling recently on it, Jesus put everything in motion to happen at the exact time because that is showing his magnificence and his, his control over everything. So he has Satan move like the raven going to and fro to tempt Adam and Eve eat of this tree that's right here, ripe right now, and you will be like gods you will have the knowledge and power of good and evil to make your own choices and that is what god is trying to hold back from you so again they're going for pride i want the knowledge of good and evil i say what's good and evil it's just like what cain did after god said bring a sacrifice he told him what to bring and abel brought the blood of the innocent lamb as they were instructed Right after original sin, God killed an innocent am animal to give them coats of skins. So Cain and Abel growing up, they knew what was meant to be offered. Cain said, I want to bring my own fruits. And, and think about this. He didn't say, I want to bring the law. He said, I want to bring my fruits of what I've done. And God said, that's not acceptable. I only want the blood of the innocent. So he was foreshadowing, of course, Jesus. And because of not accepting his fruits, his law keeping, and his good deeds of what he did with his own hands, he grew jealous and killed the younger brother who had the blood of the innocent lamb. Israel was furious because they had their way of keeping the law and doing good to earn God's respect and it was of their power. But God said, no, I want the blood of the innocent and I've sent my son Jesus to be that. And they hated him and they killed him. So God has woven this story throughout the Bible from the first word being Bereshit, which is first fruits. But the word starts out Rashit, Rashit is actually first fruits. Bar is the word for son. Like, I don't have it up here, but Bar, Abbas is son of Abba Father. Bar Rashid says the son will be the first fruits. So they ate of the fig and chose the law and they lost the spirit of God. There was the tree of life that then was guarded until Jesus came and Jesus fulfilled and the dove came back, the Holy Spirit dove descended on him, and then he started offering the blood of the new covenant. It was guarded for all those years. They drank wine before, but it didn't bring them healing until Jesus sanctified it. And we, we are sanctified in his blood. We are justified in his blood. We are made snow white in his blood and nothing that we do, including our fruits, so from the parable of the sower, you know that you are truly saved when you have the head knowledge, but it travels the 18 inches down to the heart, 18 being the number of bondage, to a good heart where the message is received and believed in the heart. And then you have truly believed and you are receiving the Holy Spirit and the Holy Spirit and you together will bring forth fruit. The fruit is a visible sign that they may see and bless God, but it is not your salvation. It is evidence. 
Some people's fruit may be harder to see, but it is not ours to judge. Man looks at the outward appearance. That guy's a good guy. He's a Christian. Maybe not. That person's a terrible person. He's not a Christian. Maybe not. Because God doesn't look at the outward appearance or what we do. God looks straight through to the heart. And he says, that person, in a good, humble, contrite heart, heard the message, was broken by it, and cried out, help me, I need you. Adam and Eve were in a sense saying, I don't need you. Cain was saying, I don't need your stinking lamb. Look what I did. Israel, when they were offered God's marriage proposal, whatever he says, we can do it. They didn't even hear the whole thing. Whatever he says, we can do it. So they had heard some of the first 10, but started to talk over him in the midst of it. They ended up blowing the very first three combo have no other gods before me. Don't make a golden calf. Don't bow down to worship it. So you see how much that worked. But there were 600 more commandments. Whatever he says we can do. It's this pride that says, I can. Look at me. I can do this. Look at me. Look at what I've done. Look how good I am doing now. And I admonish you. I warn you all. Present the blood of the innocent lamb. Remember who you are in there and not what you've done. What you've done counts. God says, don't, don't think for a minute it doesn't count and don't stop doing good. Because he who comes to me must believe that I am and that I am a rewarder of those who diligently seek me. So many people say, I'm not worried about <laughs> rewards in heaven. I'll be happy being the doorman, etc., etc." Yes, when you're there, if you see everybody else getting wonderful rewards and you have none, you will feel different. The most important thing is that you know you needed a Savior and that Jesus is that Savior and the only one and you have trusted in your heart. Thank you. You have saved me, a wretch like me. Okay? And then as good as you do, put it over there on the shelf, remember it was a cooperation. We're an empty earthen vessel. We receive the Holy Spirit. Jesus Christ and the Holy Spirit work in our lives. All work you do is a cooperation of you letting yourself be used. But is the earthen vessel the glory or is the light that comes from it the glory? And that light is Jesus. That's why when he gives us crowns, we'll put them back at his feet because we understand we were nothing. We were empty. We were dark. But we love the light. And we're thankful of the light. So, Mr. Bones, I, uh, I got into a little preaching there. I think those were necessary words. But here's what I want to warn us about, okay? I believe we found it. I believe I was called for a job. I believe the Holy Spirit fueled me to do this wonderful job. It has been a blessing to me and Mr. Bones and my wife and to all of the tens of thousands of people that have become part of our family that we can't wait to rejoice with on a personal level from around the world. How wonderful is that? But I believe that what I was called to do was find this hidden feast this hidden understanding and reveal it. So I feel like my job is done. I've finally had the ferocious hunger and unction to keep searching to be at peace, at ease. It's like you did it. This, this is what I wanted to show you. God said, this is what I wanted to show you. Good job. You found it. Now, Let's address the elephant in the room, Mr. Bones. Is there a pink elephant over there? <laughs> what are you seeing, Mr. Bones? Here's the elephant in the room. What if it passes? What if it passes? Well, number one, our faith is in God, 
our beloved Jesus, and his word. He promised his word would be on earth and he would preserve it even after heaven and earth pass away, his word would never pass away. We believe his word and we believe his promises. He promised he would come back for us who have trusted in him and have been born again of the spirit. He promised to take us out of here before the seven years of Jacob's trouble because that trouble is for Jacob and the unbelieving world. He promised to take us out of here. He promised that we would see the day approaching and we see the day approaching. I don't know if any of us thought we would see it this specifically, but again, our faith is in, if this passes, doesn't matter. Rapture is still happening. Why? Because God's word says it. Pre-tribulation rapture is happening. God says nothing can happen until the righteous are out. How am I righteous? I'm made righteous in his blood. I knew no righteousness. He knew no sin and became sin for us so that we who knew no righteousness could become the righteousness of him. The righteous must be taken out before the sword can come. We see the sword coming. So if it passes, this week, this next three days, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, don't panic. Right after the 9th of Av, I won't understand it, honestly, because everything was so specific, but I have no doubt the Lord will lead us to understand it after. Right after the 9th of Av, remember, after the curse was over, nobody died on that final 9th and 10th of Av, so they stayed in their graves for five more days until the moon was full because they weren't sure if maybe they counted the new sliver wrong. So when the moon was full, they knew we are on the right calendar. This is Tuba Ab or the 15th of Ab. That is the day they made their feast of wine for Israel. And it's a seven day feast in the which virgins dress in white and dance in the wine vineyards waiting for the bride to come and snatch them away. Something we've looked at every year since we heard of it. That's where we would go next, okay? And this, again, for Israel, became the second biggest festival of all their feasts. I think second after Tabernacles or possibly Yom Kippur. But, so that's where we would go next. Again, I wouldn't understand it, but God will help us understand it if it happens. After that, there's a feast of oil. Seven complete Sabbaths and a day. So from the eighth of Av, one Sabbath, two Sabbath, three Sabbaths left in Av. Then a few dark days of no moon. Then another Sabbath, another, another, another. So four Sabbaths in every given moon, bringing us to the morrow after will be when the moon disappears, the day before the Feast of Trumpets is the true feast of oil. Remember the parable of the virgins? They didn't have enough oil. Remember, oil represents the Holy Spirit being born again. That could be up God's sleeve. Again, I don't understand how you could say this is the day the Spirit moves. And this is the day the Gentile went into the land and the Gentile got married and on and on but he'll make us understand, okay? And so that will be our day. Again, just like the 8th of Av at evening, the twinkling of an eye is sunset, turns into the 9th of Av. And we're supposed to go with twinkling of an eye between the 8th and 9th would be absolutely perfect. Exactly the same is seven complete Sabbaths and the morrow after would be the day before Feast of Trumpets as it turns into the Feast of Trumpets could be that same great and terrible day. So that is what we'll look at. Well, what if that passes? All right, <laughs> let's go there. Let's go there, okay? Because these fall feasts, they all kind of bleed together in awesomeness. We all thought the tribulation would start in the fall feast. Hopefully trumpets, maybe atonement, possibly tabernacles or the final day of tabernacles. But after that, I'm saying, okay, we got to recalculate our years because that means we got to go all the way till next summer, 
2024. But I have a good reason not to believe that. 12 timelines. We've gone over these a few times, but I just wanted to add from my brother Aaron at God A Minute, uh, just recently revealed this on his show from his team. They came up with the understanding, which is documented but never really meant much to us, that David dies in 971 BC. Well, our understanding is the earth started at 3971 BC, making David's death exactly at 3,000 years. And then 3,000 years from that, you add the BC to the AD 2030, and you have a perfect 6,000. And that is God's style. So all these things point towards the 2030. We're already at a place where it seems like we can barely fit in our seven-year tribulation. But let's say 9th of Av, 2023, 2023 to 2024, to 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30. Ninth of Av of 2030. Israel, if their true age was counted from 1950, is still 80 years old, and the tribulation still ends in 2030. I count a perfect seven. Again, bringing us all the way to right before the fall feast. The tribulation truly should start when the covenant is signed, not when we leave. It has always made sense for there to be a gap. Rapture, chaos, hailstones, coals of fire, earthquakes everywhere, power outages, worldwide chaos, which will set the stage for the Antichrist to come up with the answers and strengthen a seven-year covenant that already exists. As you know, they are planning to strengthen a seven-year covenant. They are also bringing in five more members for a total of 10 members of the BRICS, which will be just like 10 kings that will have authority and give their power over to the one. So everything is set perfectly. Our brother Tom, Tommy Boy down at the river, uh, Watchman River, just did a video today, which he pointed out, I think it was about eight or 10 things that are scheduled for July 26th, including, as I'm sure most of you have seen, they're going to reveal the alien stuff like never before. Like this is going to be full on, yes, we've known of aliens, we've worked with them, there's these many different kinds, here's their vehicles. I mean, this is the big thing. They've done this before every time there was an amazing high watch. Because if they wait till after we're gone to start talking aliens, everybody's going to know they're faking it. But if they had this scheduled, I promise you, they on Satan's team, the Illuminati, those using CERN to look into dark matter and make predictions like on The Simpsons, that, that comes from intel of them looking into dark matter and into the other realms. That's where that comes from. They are not God. They can see things outside of time because those people are seeing those things outside of time in the other realms. But they can't predict the future. God said, I am God. I, there's no one like me calling the end from the beginning. So they have all these things set up for July 26, and it just so happens to be the Feast of New Wine, which is the true day of Pentecost, that the church was birthed. And the way God works is, I'm gonna give the church this many years and take them out on the self-same day. Self-same day is God's style. Caleb came out with a good report on the 8th of Av. On the 8th of Av, 45 years later, Caleb goes into the land. He's the first one to get his land. The Gentile is the first one to go to the promised land. Then Israel gets to divvy their spots. After the rapture, deals with Israel will accelerate because Satan wants Israel. And Satan wants that temple because he knows there's only one temple on earth that will ever matter. So he will orchestrate Israel getting their temple and their land and just like the story of Joshua. So, we see this day approaching. Our faith is in God's word is true. He promised to rapture us. Our hope, get the difference in this, our faith is in Jesus Christ. Our faith is his blood has made us righteous. His blood has washed us clean. 
the church of Laodicea didn't have vision, so he recommended eye salve. You're blind. You think you're rich. You think you got it. Just like Adam and Eve thought for a split second, if we eat this fruit, we're going to have the power. And Cain, when he brought his fruit, he's going to have the power. In Israel, when they said, whatever he says, we can do it because we're going to be the top nation in the world. That pride. Laodicea thought they were rich, but they didn't have vision. He said, buy of me gold, representing the gold of deity. These people are not saved in the church of Laodicea. He says, buy for me white robes. Stop trying to clean your own white robe. Because I promise you, you have spots still on your white robe if you're trying to clean it yourself. And one spot means you don't have a ticket to heaven. Buy of me gold and white robes. He is saying, you're not saved yet because you're still looking at you. Call upon Jesus. Say, I am nothing. Your blood alone washes me clean. That's where our faith is. So our faith is in what Jesus did. Our faith is he gave us his word on earth and his word says it. Our faith is he made promises to us. I will keep you from. I will keep you out of. You believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you so. Behold, I go away to prepare a place for all of you. And I will come again. And I will call you up to the clouds. And you will go with me into the ark for seven. That's, that's our faith is in. He, he said it. I know it. He said, nobody knows but the Father. But the Father will send the Holy Spirit to show you. But... The Father will send the Holy Spirit revealing all things. So if you're still hung up on nobody knows the day of the hour, you have to look at the two big butts. I like big butts, I cannot lie. These are appropriately the best butts in the Bible. But God will. But God will send us. You will see the day approaching. We see the day approaching. Our faith will not be dashed. We might be disappointed. And what's wrong with disappointment? You know, we've gotten so childlike in the community that we can't handle any disappointment. Hey, life is full of disappointments. How'd you feel after the election last time? Why didn't God save us from that disappointment? We all thought the guy that was doing a great job would win, right? What do we get? Have you been disappointed this last four years? Have you been disappointed that we're not out of here? People say, I watch every day. Are you disappointed every single day? Or are you not really watching that hard? Okay? We're saying we see something special, unique, powerful. I want to be there testifying. My God is good. We did see the day approaching. We did think this. He did lead us. I want a group of us, 50,000 at least strong, saying we did see it. We trusted in you. And if the day passed, we didn't even blink. We said, what's next? Full moon, tuba av, keep our eyes open. Feast of oil that turns into the trumpets. Now here's what'll happen. If we don't get raptured, watch how they pull back all this alien stuff. Just watch how they pull it back and start tucking it away. Watch how BRICS is supposed to solidify the 10 kings and they're working towards the one world currency. Watch how there's some kind of glitch that puts that right back in the box. They're supposed to strengthen a covenant with many, strengthen an already covenant that has a deadline for seven. If we don't go during the fall feast, watch how they refinagle and finiculate to get seven more years. Because he can't come and strengthen a covenant for six. So they're going to have to move their dates up too. So that is why we feel very strong, very confident. And I promise you, the Lord is delighted in us looking and hoping for this day. But our faith is his word is true. He is coming. He is going to take us. We see it. It can't be long. We think it's now, but no problem if it's not. We in the Watchman community are here for you. Don't 
let yourself be too disappointed because the great day is still coming. Okay? Incredible revelations. Our God is so good. One thing I just want to reiterate. God gave us possibly the understanding of the original sin. They ate figs and didn't eat the wine, the grapes. And if you're hung up on a tree, God calls all the fruit of the earth herbs. You know, and we know those are different fruits, but he calls them herbs. And he, and he calls, there's, there's a prophecy where they asked the uh, olive tree and, and the vine uh, and the fig tree to rule over them, right? And, and they said, I'm, I'm not going to give up my, uh, my sweetness and my, my wine that makes glad the heart of God. And I'm not going to give up my precious oil. And so they turned to the bramble bush. Okay, but they're all talked about as trees, even though it's a bush with thorns and a vine. Okay, so I think we got that. And then God gave us two specific prophecies of Noah gets off. Well, first of all, he releases the dove and the raven on the ninth of Av. Then he gets off the ark, grows a vineyard. And when are you going to get drunk on your new vineyards? First produce is the new wine. So at the time of new wine is when... He, he got drunk and Ham raped Noah's wife. That's called uncovering your father's nakedness when you sleep with his wife. That's in Leviticus, I believe, 2011. So that happened on the ninth of Av. And Noah got an evil report. So we got two examples from Genesis. Two examples in Exodus where they should have drank the wine cup of marriage. They got the wine cup of wrath and it was the ninth of Av. They should have gone into the promised land on the 8th of Av. They got the evil report and the curse. There was an evil report and a curse, just like before. The story of Samson, there's two stories. He's trying to marry a Gentile bride. There's a riddle of 30. He sets the foxes loose in the standing corn, which means it's the end of the wheat harvest. And they go, 300 of them, burning down all the corn. It's the time of new wine. His final story, he's grinding wheat at the end of new wine. And he uh, is called to the party where they're drunk, marry on new wine. So again, he ties it together with all these little clues, especially the 3,000 dying. Then you go down to Jesus, and Jesus has two prophecies of the 8th of Av, receiving the Spirit from God at the appointed time. This was the biggest deal since Adam lost it. His ministry started when he got the dove restored into mankind that he would then be able to give. That was the price paid. He had to spill that perfect dove-soaked blood, the Holy Spirit-soaked blood. Then God had to raise him to show victory. He went up to heaven, presented the first fruits, came back and walked as prophesied to go up on Shavuot after giving commandments and instructing them to go to Jerusalem and wait. Then he poured out the Spirit, eighth of Av. So two prophecies, again, of Jesus and the church. All of those tell me and Mr. Bones, we found the rapture prophecy. Is God going to use it, Mr. Bones? Well, I'm not exactly sure, but I really have a lot of hope this is it. Keep your eyes open, go outside, look up, be prepared. Uh, maybe on that day, don't drive, don't fly, don't be on a jet ski or something like that. Maybe, maybe don't have the gas in your gas stove turned up real high. Uh, you know, you could just be thoughtful of, I'm gonna, it's gonna be a little extra aware today. And then um, uh, again, I say from the 26, seven and eight it is a fair range. After that, look for the full moon. After that, we'll all be on and uh, expressing our ideas and thoughts. So I just wanted to give you that final word. Hopefully, Mr. Bones, these are our famous last words. I will see you in the cloud.